And because they refused to hear the truth, they were given a lie deeply embedded within their hearts to believe in instead. Hey there folks, this is Two Rebels Off-Grid. If you don't know us, we're Carrie and Doug. We moved out of Colorado as fast as we could. We sold everything, most everything we have. And we came to Cochise County, Arizona, where we've been setting up a homestead. Get out of the room! <laughs> One thing I wanted to talk about, it could be kind of a rant of sorts is uh, this thing, this uh, new trend of fear-mongering called climate. I'm gonna for now on in this video call it CC. But CC is this idea that we are going into a great uh, change in the system of things and that it's going to bring on new technologies that will save us from this. And I am a firm believer that CC is in constant change and has been since the beginning of time, before any of us have even inhaled our first breath on this planet. The systems were put in place. These systems by God alone can only be destroyed by God alone. The ocean's boundaries were set by God. The height of the mountains were set by God. As far as man can go into the sea, into the ocean, or as far out into space has been set by God. No man has the capability of destroying this planet. Nor can they save this planet if that purpose is set in motion. Here in Arizona, we've been experiencing a shift in the weather. This doesn't mean it's abnormal. In my opinion, this has been going on forever and ever. It fluctuates, it ebb and flows like the ocean waves. And a lot of people think that just because it changes in their lifetime, that it is something that us humans have done directly and that we also have the capability of changing it. This is called terraforming. It's in sci-fi where we land spaceships or big engineering instruments onto planets and we blow up CO2 and we change and we add oxygen to these planets so it's livable by humans. Something like that would take a millennial to do. It is so far-fetched in the science fiction realm. So far-fetched. And the mobocracy going on in Washington, D.C., the political empirical mobocracy that's going on is going to make money off this idea. But I digress, or I equius and say that only God has his power of change and of saving. And so don't let this put you into fear-mongering, that's their intentions, because they'll make money off of it eventually. Uh, so, what I'm getting at, I'm almost done with the rant. I'm just, I'm just saying that here we haven't been getting the rain. They say that the rain's been pushed, the monsoons have been pushed further into the seasons over the last few years. And I have not lived here over the past few years. We've almost lived here for one year. And yes, it may have changed within this year. I mean, within a decade, it might change. But overall, those systems have been in place and they are perfect. They are perfect, just like the human being. The, all the systems within the human is all set up perfectly to fight viruses and pandemics. The weather has been 
pretty dry. We have been getting rains, finally. We've been getting uh, substantial drizzle rains, which is good. I mean, I like that better than the torrential rains because the torrential rain tends to cause sheet runoff, sheet flow, and is more of a destructive thing than a uh, absorption thing into the ground. So our trees are happy, we're happy. It cools it down at night. Uh, I go to work in Tombstone. Unfortunately, Tombstone gets rain almost every day, but up here, uh, Carrie tells me we didn't get rain while I'm at work. So that's kind of disappointing. We don't have our system set up anyways to collect the water, but it would be nice to have test drones with that. But anyhow, this video is gonna be on putting up the roof. The, what I now call the umbrella faux reciprocal roof. <laughs> so it's my own thing, I think. Unless you guys can find something like it on the internet, then you can just show me what the real name is. But I call it the umbrella roof because it has a handle on it like an umbrella. It's at almost the same angle as the umbrella, and its job is to do what an umbrella does, and that's just to have the water run off to the edges where I will be putting in a gutter. So in this video, in the background, you'll see imagery of me putting down typical, I believe it's one eighth inch hardware cloth. I think you could have got away with even up to half inch hardware cloth, but I wanted it to be very small because I know that the lime after I sifted it will still come through the, through the little pores of the, of the hardware cloth. I put that up, I stapled it down with U-nails. Uh, I think the real name for those are staples, but I keep calling them U-nails for some reason, just like gabions and <laughs> carns. I get that mixed up too. But yeah, guys, um, I doubled it up. And my theory is that the lime will go in between one layer and the other, and it'll actually make it really solid. It's gonna make be very solid. I'm very impressed with how this has turned out, this first coat. Uh, I actually went down to the ghost town here in our local ghost town. We have many of them, but I went to one that's close by. And I went to a saloon and I analyzed how they have the adobe brick, which is the equivalent of this if you took the plastic off. You took the plastic off this essentially that's what you have here is an adobe brick and they did that they put that down and then they put down a lime layer and you can see it's about an inch thick of lime there's no there's no straw in there there's nothing organic in there it's just sand small gravel and lime and then on the last coat you can barely see it it's about an eighth of an inch thick is their plaster and so i'm going to do the same thing here it's going to be the same on these walls too. It seems more realistic to me to look to the past. And that's not too far off, you know, the 1800s when the cowboys were here and they were building all their structures and they were using the local stuff. They didn't have, they weren't going to wagon in sand. They weren't going to wagon in lime. So they went to the washes that were on their property. They scooped up that sand. The lime, they most likely took caliche that was found very uh, just under the surface and they probably fired that up in hot fires and crushed it and slaked it and used that for their, so they used adobe, they used the dirt for the adobe, then they did the sand from the wash, lime from the caliche, mixed it together, smeared it on and called it done, right? If you ever watch the movie Apocalypto, the Aztecs or the Mayans were, they had a big old lime mine and they had all the slaves going out there, pulling it up out of the ground. And they were covered in this stuff. But this stuff's very caustic. It can burn you, so you shouldn't touch it with bare hands. Um, basically fast forwarding us into the past because this is how almost every culture out there built their stone structures that or they used bitumen 
which is the equivalent of like asphalt on our roads today. But lime is what held the earth together back in the days of antiquities. So just bringing it back, but in my opinion, bringing it back can sometimes be propelling us forward. Brilliant. So you're using local stuff. You're not importing anything. And the Romans did that too. The Byzantines did that. The Egyptians did that. Everybody that had a civilization worth mentioning had used lime. And like I said, some of them used bitumen, which is something you would find like, uh, it comes up from the ground and it looks like a big old oil lake, but it's based with bitumen, which is the asphalt that you will see in streets. I don't have any bitumen. I don't even know where I'd find any bitumen. So I do have caliche, I do have lime. I'm just buying bagged lime because I can. If I ever got to the point where I ran out of complete money, I'd probably actually attempt the caliche lime and see if that would work. And I might actually do that anyways at some point. But we're making progress. This has to dry. And the thing with lime is you have to keep it moist for up to two weeks. It takes actually like two years for lime to fully cure, but that initial two weeks keeping it slightly damp once in a while, like hosing it off once, once a day or something like that, is very beneficial on slowing down the calcification of that lime and it makes it harder. So I was fortunate to have rain, drizzle rain, every day after I applied this plaster. And it's a blessing in disguise, definitely, because it's keeping it moist. It's slowing down that, that uh, drying process. It's going to harden up. I'm going to give it two weeks at this stage. This is the first coat. It's looking good. Uh, after two weeks, I'm going to go ahead and make a different batch of lime plaster. And this is going to be more of a half and half ratio. It's going to be half lime, half sand, and it's going to go on much thicker. I'm going to get out all this, the slumps because the problem with, unless I wanted to put a board every one foot up here, it's going to slump a little bit, right? And the bad thing about the slumping is the water will come down and it'll kind of puddle there. And I don't want that. So it's what we're going to do is we're going to come back in a, another video and we're going to apply a thicker layer and we're actually going to flatten that whole roof so it has no breaks. So water hits the top and it'll just flow down. It won't puddle anywhere. And it's gonna make it super strong. It's also gonna add a lot of weight. That weight is gonna assist on keeping it from blowing away like a sail. Uh, I still need to get those last two earth bags up there. Once I get, it's gonna be very tricky guys because I'm navigating around this wire mesh that's on the edge. It's kind of dangerous, so I have to go very slow, and I can only bring three buckets up at a time to the very top. So that's going to be a project that Carrie is going to have to help me on. She's going to have to sit at the bottom with the buckets, and I'm going to have to get some kind of hook and a chain and pull it up and just do it slow as all heck. It's going to take me forever, I think, to get those last two bags up. But that's where I'm going to be interjecting that, that mesh in between the last two sandbags. And I'll finish off that last first coat where you see here on the edges where it's missing. That will get finished with the first coat. And once that is completed, then I can do that second coat over the entire thing. And lastly, it will be a lime wash, which is basically lime and water. Well, I'm waiting for this to dry. I've decided to go ahead and start doing some masonry work and that's going to be in the next video. So don't expect to see this roof get finished in the next video. It's going to be masonry work. I'm not a mason. I pretty much, uh, and just inspired by the past, I guess you could say, uh, guys, hopefully we get more rain in the near future. I heard this weekend we're supposed to get some good monsoons that come in. Uh, you can come in here. This is the only shaded structure on our property that we made ourselves now. The RV doesn't count. Those awnings don't count. This is the very first building where I can sit in the shade now. 
it's actually quite wonderful and the chickens come in here and they know where the shade is my dog loves it in here and you can actually sit in here when it's raining and you don't get a drop on you so that's a plus and that's just with the first layer first layer is only like that thick but it's already very rigid. Just wanted to put this one out, just keep you updated. Also, I just wanted to remind you that if you go to our website, not on YouTube, if you go to Two Rebels Off Grid, we have a list now of resources that we trust, that we found had very high quality service, okay? We have used other contractors, we've used other services that didn't give us good service or they were passive aggressive or they were you could tell that they were trying to you know spin one on us but we didn't put them on that list so you can be insured that every company that we listed on there is actually people we trust to send your way you know so send you their way is what i'm trying to say but so yeah go there it's free uh, go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter. Carrie's putting out newsletters once a week, and uh, it's just uh, great side information, guys. Just taking you all up. The guineas want to check out the first lime layer in the chicken tower. And we'll just run in here really quick and show you. Today, after I finished this roof, a gentle rain came down, and that was perfect for keeping this lime from drying out too quick and actually the last time that i worked the same thing happened a drizzle came later on good better than a torrential rain but this is what it's looking like first day you can see how the meshes the lime goes between the mesh and drips down a little bit like a stalagmite and stalactite and that's actually intentional if I want to plaster the ceiling eventually, I could do that. Those little nodules will help adhere the next layer of plaster. But that's it for the first day. Um, I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy the day and I hope you stay cool and we look forward to seeing you in this next video coming up.